ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಮಾರಂಭಾತಯಾಪುನಮಧ್ಯಮಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿತ್ರಣಾಯಮೇನೆಸ್
നാരായണ പദത്തിക്ക് സംഗ്രഹമായിരിക്കയാതെ സകല ജഗത്തിക്കും കാരണമാണ് സകല ജഗത്തിക്കും കാരണമായി സർവരക്ഷകനാണ് So before I go further, I want to make a few general remarks. So in the beginning, we saw, uh, in the beginning in the sense, about four to five sutras earlier, <coughs> we saw that we came across a sutra where it said, Aishwariya kai vallya bhagavalla bhangalai ashit pattavar helakti avattai talakkati kodukkum So by chanting the Ashtakshara Mahamantra, those who are desirous of attaining material prosperity will attain that. Those who want to attain Kaivalya will attain that. Those who want to attain Moksha will attain that. So then I was just thinking, <coughs> how many times one has to chant? 10 times every day, 15 times, 50 times, 100 times, something like that. Then yesterday I was having a discussion with a great scholar in Melkote, a very old and reputed scholar. Then he told me, if a person has to give the Ashtakshara Mahamantra, the Upadesha of an Ashtakshara Mahamantra, then for, for him to get the eligibility to teach the Ashtakshara Mahamantra as an Upadesha, in the sense, in the traditional way it is done. Then for a long number of periods, a long period of time, he has to chant the Ashtakshara every day 8,000 times. <laughs> so for a considerable duration, they don't say 10 years, 15 years, because as far as the chanting or meditation upon the Lord is concerned, the Brahma Sutra say, Aprayana Tatra Pihidrishtam. Until the person lives, he has to engage in the meditation of the Lord. He has to engage in the chanting of the names of the Lord, especially these mantras, etc. And if a person has to become eligible to give it in Upadesha to others, even for one person, he has to chant it minimum 8,000 times for a long duration. How much they don't mention? Because it depends on the person. So then I was convinced that if we, if we, are, if we feel we are ignorant, there is nothing wrong in that because, of course, I have never done even 1,000 times a day. <laughs> Maximum, <laughs> we may do 10 times, 100, 108 times or something like that. Which is grossly, grossly inadequate. But <clears throat> what happens after a longer period of time, it becomes faster. You get more and more uh, acquainted with the mantra and so many good things occur. So even, even if we don't want good things to happen, they will start happening. But for that to happen, you have to do it minimum 8,000 times a day. That means, I think you have to spend four to five hours a day. But four to five hours a day is not very, um, it's not impossible. But we have so many other things to do in life which, for which we give priority that uh, we totally ignore these things. So, of course, doing it 10 times or 100 times also is good. It's not bad but it's grossly inadequate. <laughs> so we cannot claim that we have not attained any fruits or results by chanting the Ashtakshara. Because unless you do it for the prescribed number of times, how can you say that it is not fruitful? And all this, the thoughts occurred to me only because I thought, no, I have done this for so many years. What has it given me? So, I cannot claim anything because I have done it almost now. My, the number of times I have done it is almost next to nothing when compared to what is actually prescribed. So, this, this is generally I wanted to share with you my thoughts about the 
chanting that how much one is expected to do according to the procedures and how much less are almost next to nothing that people like me are doing. But that means they have to take more motivation and do it more and more and more. Anyway, <clears throat> so in the among the first three words, that is Om, Namaha, and among the three words, Om, Namaha, and Narayana. Yeah? The first word is the Pranava, which is Om. And among the Pranaya, among the three words, three alphabets or syllables that uh, constitute the syllable Om, you have Akara as the beginning letter. So this Akara is very, very, very significant because Akaram Sakala Shabdattakum Karanamai. So we have several statements in the Vedic, uh, Vedic uh, passages or Vedic literature rather stating that Akaro Vai Sarvavak. So the Akara is the root cause of all the sounds and also all the words. So I don't think it would be out of place to mention one very important experiment that my revered father had done when he was uh, doing some sound analysis of the Sanskrit alphabets. So he was actually involved in speech generation and speech analysis. So in Sanskrit, especially the Paninian grammar, they have mentioned these are the factors that are responsible for generation of speech. So they say Bahya Pratna and Abhyantara Pratna. They are of two types, internal efforts and external efforts. That means for the speech to be produced through the sound box. So you have what is known as gutturals, palatals, we call it as <coughs> Kantya, Dantya, Oshtya, etc. Gutturals, palatals. Kuha Visarjani, Yanam, Kanta, Akara, Kakha, Gaghanga, and Hakara and Visarga, these are called gutturals or Kantyavarnas that are produced in this portion of the, <coughs> bar on the, uh, the sound box. So when you say Ka, you can find out Ka. The, there are two portions actually come and touch like this. Ka. You can pronounce it and see. Then Ichu Yesha Nam Talu Ikara Chavar Gachacha Jajanya and Ya. Here what happens? The tongue touches the upper portion of the palate. Cha. You can do uh, pronounce it and see. Then I don't remember the exact English translation. So then you have the labials that is Papa, Babama, etc. Where no Ritu uh, Rashana Murtha. Ta. Many times uh, I see that many people from Russia and other countries they are unable to pronounce these labials or something where the uh, tongue actually it, river, um, it goes reverse and then touches the uh, inner portion of the palate. Ta, ta, etc. So they are unable to pronounce that. They, though we say ta, they will say it as ta only. So that, that is Murdha, Murdhanya Aksharas, uh, cerebrals or lingials. Then the dentals, Ta, Tha, etc., where the tip of the tongue touches the base of the teeth. That is why they are known as the dentals. Lutu, Lasana, Danta, Lakara, Tavar, Gata, Tha, Dadhana, etc. And Upu Padmani Yara Oshto U Pa Pa Ba Ba Ma Bizarra Oshto the two lips. Uh, you may give the translation if you are familiar with it. And these are the uh, Antara Pratnas. Then you have uh, Bahya Pratnas, which is Vivaraha, Nadaha, Samvaraha, Kosha, Wised, Unwised, Alpa Prana, Ma Prana, Aspirated, Unaspirated, etc. So, Pa is not voiced, Ba is the first uh, alphabet of the Varga is voiced and the third one is always uh, is unvoiced and voiced. Ka, Ga. Ka is unvoiced, whereas Ga is voiced. 
So there only you have Alpa Prana and Mahaprana, Kha and Dha. Then Dha is the particular alphabet that is associated with the nasal sound. So Kha and nasal sound becomes Nga. Like that for all the, it's a highly, highly systematic uh, uh, language because when you compare it to English, English is totally, it is in Congress when you see this. Because why A should come after B, nobody knows. Why C should come after B, nobody knows. Even until now, they have not been able to find any logical reason. Whereas you have Kaka Ganga, if you put a Karu like this, uh, my father has done a lot of research and he very beautifully explains. So Ka, you start from Ka, that is the gutturals, and you come until the labials. So uh, gradually it's a progression, natural progression from the gutturals to the labials. Then you have the Avarkiya Vinjanas, but before that you have the Swaras once again. They are also arranged in the same manner. A, E, U, R, L, like that. So it's a very systematic thing, but here what he found out was, when you actually see the waveform of a sound, there you can actually, he, found, he did a lot of research and found out that all these components can be filtered. So when you see ga, so many, you see a waveform. So if you filter out the voice portion of this and remove that from ga, it becomes ka. That means each of the components can be filtered out and they can be kept separately. So just is like if you want to prepare sambar, you put so many ingredients and make it into sambar. Similarly, if you put this, 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 five ingredients, it will become ga. If you remove this and put some other ingredient, it will become ka. If you remove the aspiration, it will be, add aspiration, it will become ga. If you remove it, it will become ga. Like this. But one common feature he found in all the alphabets, in the waveform of all the alphabets was akara. So you cannot, if you remove akara, the sound itself will not be heard. In the, in the waveform you may see, but if you remove the akara component, you cannot hear at all. Then he was astounded to find how scientific language uh, Sanskrit is and how scientifically it can be proven that uh, there is no parallel to this language or there is no, no language that is comparable to this. And if we can use a scientific gadget to say akaram sakala shabdat kum karanam akara is the base of all the shabdas, all the sounds. Akaro, vai sarva, what they proclaimed in the Vedas, akara is Initially, without a kara, you cannot have any, any sentence or any word or any alphabet for that matter. Akara, the presence of akara in all the alphabets is universal. That he could find out, he could prove based on this. Of course, one main problem is we don't have the necessary paraphernalia to reach these truths to the people. Because we had to write articles and get them published in uh, reputed journals, etc., in which we are not very good. We may write the article also, but getting it published in a person in a, in a uh, contemporary international journal that requires requires political clout and so many other things. So these truths continue to be uh, uh, continue to remain hidden on. But as has been his uh, uh, life's mission. He actually has used the modern gadgets to actually prove the concepts that are mentioned in our Shastras, which is a unique and pioneering contribution. Anyway, why I mentioned was it is so interesting because if you say how oh, Akara is the cause of all the alphabets, how can you say that? We have experiments to show that we can show it even today using SoundForge document, you can do it. Uh, SoundForge software, you can do it. So, Akaram, Akaram, Sakala Shabdat, Tukkum Karanamai, Nara, and Abadat, Tukkasandrahamai, Rikayale. It is the concise mention, mentioning of the word Narayana, of the meaning of the word Narayana. Because 
Akaro Vasudevas, you have the Ekak Sharakosha, what is known as the Ekak Sharakosha in Sanskrit, where each alphabet has a particular meaning. Akaro Vasudevas, Akara Stupita Maha, etc. So Akara is Vasudeva, Akara is Brahma, Akara is Shiva, Akara is this, Akara is that, like that. So <coughs> Akara, and one more very important aspect is that the there is lot of proximity between the meaning and also the word that denotes the meaning in sanskrit so you can just see upari when you say upari automatically you feel your bhava or your uh, mentality going up Adha down in all languages especially in sanskrit so you can see up it's like as if you are going a little bit up down it means as if you are going down similarly upari adha so like this the word narayana is a it denotes a tattva or a principle that is omnipresent omniscient omnipotent etc and the Akara also denotes Narayana, the, the Tattva or the reality called Narayana, which is once again the base of everything in this world. So Narayana is the base of everything in this world. Akara denotes a Tattva which is ba the base of all sounds and therefore base of everything in this world. Because there is such a close proximity between the word and its meaning, especially in Sanskrit. Narayana Padatik Sangrahamai Rikayade Sakara Jagat Kumkaranamai Sarvarak Sakanani Embirumani Chundi. So Akara denotes the Supreme Lord Narayana, who is the cause of all worlds, all the universes. He is mentioned as Akilanda Koti Brahmanda Nayaka. That means he is the master of all the millions and trillions of Brahmandas. You can Brahmanda, you can take it as the solar systems or stars or whatever it is. Solar system is only a part of the uh, what do you call the galaxy. Our solar system is such a small speck, and we scientifically we are mentioned that there are trillions and trillions of galaxies who nobody has known how many. So our uh, we can it's mind boggling and even thinking about it uh, that strains your mind like anything. So, Sakala Jagat Kumka, you can take it as all worlds or all, ga all ga galaxies or whatever. It can expand to any extent based on your uh, conception. Therefore, and Sarva Rakshakana, Embiruman, Chundu Hirati. So, it denotes the <coughs> Supreme Lord, who is the Lord of all the galaxies and also the protector of all these galaxies. So we will study the commentary now. Adavade vaksharatrayatilam vaitukkundu prathamakshiravan akaram mamarupam chabhutanam krityanam chaprapanchanam vedashabdebhyevado devadinam chakarasahayam kirapadiye logika sakalashabdakgilukkum vedam karanamai pranavadhyas tathavedaha Omkara Prabhava Veda. So it is mentioned like Pranavadya Stata Veda. Pranave Pariyavastita. Vagmayam Pranavasarvam. Smart Pranava Madhyaseti. Omkara Prabhava Veda. Omkara Prabhava Svara. Omkara Prabhavam Sarvam. The Katstavar Jangamam. Then Samasta Shabdamura Twati Akarasya Svavata. Samastavatya Muratvati Brahmano Pisvabhavataha Vatyavatika Sammandha Sammandha Yora Sammandha Stayora That Pratiyate In Girapadiya Sakala Shabdhatta Kunkaranamai Sarveshwaran Samastavas Pusharira Taya Sarvarakshakana Hairi Kumpadiya Pratipadi Kira Narayana Padatta Kusangrahamai Rikayade Tovai Mani Bhutari Dayante, Yenajatari Givanti, 
சொல்லுகிறபடியே எல்லா ஜகத்துக்கும் காரணமாய் எல்லாருக்கும் ரட்சகமாய் இருக்கும் எம்பெருமானை சொல்லுகிற தெங்கை இத்தாலில் அச்சரத்தில் பிரகத்தியர்த்தமான காரணத்துவம் தாத்தர்த்தமான ரட்சகத்துவம் சொல்லித்தாய்த்து இவ்வகாரத்துக்கு நாராயண பர சங்கிரகத்தையா ரட்சகவாதித்வம் சொல்லும் போது தாத்து சித்த வேஷத்தை அவலம்பித்தே சொல்ல வேணும் இரே சோ ஹியர் ஹி கிவ்ஸ் ஹி ஆக்சுவலி எக்ஸ்ட்ராக்ட்ஸ் கோட்ஸ் ராதர் தி டிஃபரெண்ட் பிரமாண வாக்கியாஸ் ஆர் தி statements from vedas upanishad itihasas puranas etc which actually <coughs> mention about how great how important how all encompassing the pranava is and among them how akara is the most important component which i have just explained in detail apart from that two important aspects if we consider a as a word according to sanskrit grammar if there has to be a word it is mentioned as panini mentions it as suptingantam padam that means it should have two components one is the prakriti component and the other is pratyaya component that means you have a nominal stem and then you have a suffix for example if you say ramayana that means by rama so in english what happens the case in case suffix you don't call it a suffix because the you call it an interjection or something like that which denotes the case ending whether it is for example ramayana we call it as tritiya bhakti in sanskrit it is known as instrumental case in english so in the case endings are stand alone which are associated with the nouns in english because according to language experts english hindi etc where you say ram ko ram se etc are called as non agglutinative types of languages whereas sanskrit tamil kannada the <coughs> case endings whether it is instrumental case dative case ablative case accusative case nominative case etc they are in the form of suffix and they join with the stem means a nominal stem itself so they are called as agglutinative type of languages for example ramanai ramanal ramane ramane rende ramanil etc in kannada we have ramanannu ramaninda ramanige ramanalli ramana etc so in sanskrit also we have ramasya ramena ramate ramaya etc so if it has to become a proper word then it has to have two components only the prakriti component and the pratyaya component that is the nominal stem which is known as pratipadika in sanskrit and then we have to have the pratyaya that is the suffix <coughs> so here if you say a it actually consists of both the prakriti and pratyaya which is a very peculiar formation but it is grammatically correct though you don't we are not able to distinguish which is the nominal stem which is the suffix like in ramayana or hari harina haraye harau etc it has two components and both of these components have a specific meaning for example you say ramaha phalam khadati rama eats a fruit so here ramaha is rama 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 ha is the nominative singular <coughs> case ending of the nominal stem rama which is the pratipadika as per sanskrit language so what is the case ending that the nominative case singular suffix which is su which is added to the nominal stem rama which results in the word rama ha what does the suffix mean the suffix denotes the agency once again i am putting it in the grammatical technical language so rama is the agent 
who performs the task of eating it is done on the fruit so he is the agent who is the performer of the activity called eating which happens on the fruit which is called as ramaha alankarati so ramaha here the nominative case suffix denotes the that drama is the agent or it denotes the aspect of agency of performing a particular action which exists in drama so this is how grammatically sanskrit language or the words that are there in sanskrit are analyzed and mentioned in a technical jargon actually so agency means a person in whom there is doership so rama is called the agent that means he is the doer not the agency agent etc which is used in commercial term commercial uh, terminology but agency means doership that's all of course it is similar to what is used in commercial terms but it's not it has got nothing to do with those terms it is purely we use this kind of this agency agent etc these words in the context of explanation of language so this is a term associated with linguistics and pedagogy rather than some commercial uh, aspect so here he says ittalim vaksharatil prakrityarthamana karanatvam dhatvarthamana rakshakatvam shundittaiti so the meaning of the prakriti or the nominal stem is that it is the cause the entity that is denoted by this word is the cause of everything in this universe and all the universes and the meaning of the dhat oh, if you consider it as that if you consider it as a dhatu that is a root then what happens you actually that is a, as a verbal stem then rakshakatvam should then what happens you have the meaning of protection a protector that means protectorship as you would like to put it if it's a literal translation from sanskrit to english so we say rakshakatvam that means protectorship becomes mentioned in this becomes denoted that is if you tell it in a sanskritized english so if you consider this as a um, now then the nominal stem denotes that it is the cause of everything if you consider it as a kriyapada or verb then the root explains the meaning that it is the protector of everything in this world so that is how it is so that is very well established by anuradha mami and also the different shlokas i have explained there uh, Purple. So I am not going to detail the exposition of the focus, which I have just uh, uh, told now. That is, pranavadhyas tatha veda ha pranave pariyavastita ha vangmayam pranavas sarvam asma pranavam abhyaseti omkar prabhava veda ha omkar prabhava swara ha omkar prabhavam sarvam jagat sthavara jangamam bhistwa mentioning about the all encompassing nature of the pranava or omkara and then akara is greatly praised by saying samasta shabda moolatvat akarasya swabhavatah samasta vachya moolatvat brahmano api swabhavatah vachya vachaka sambandha stayor arthat pratiyate this explain then <clears throat> so when you say it is the protector of all what do you mean by protection suppose i i have a threat from somebody who wants to man handle me <laughs> i am giving a very uh, worldly scenario don't mistake me so if i say ah it will protect me that is the a person may ask so what does it mean by protection rakshikayavade virodhiye pokkuhayam apekshitatte kodukkayum so it will protect me it will protect everybody 
When you say protecting, what does it mean? Suppose some earthquake is going to come or tsunami is going to come or some big uh, cyclone is going to come. Can the cyclone be done away with by this? No, it should not be taken in that context. So the meaning of Rakshikai or protection is Rakshikaya vade virodhye pokkuhayam so, reading as of all the impediments, that is the first component. Second component is <coughs> giving us the desired results. So, even in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, it says, Yoga Kshemam Vaham. What do you mean by Yoga Kshema? There it mentions sapraptasya prapti hi praptasya parirakshana. That is attaining something that is desired, what is not attained. And after attaining that, that is known as yoga. And what is kshema? Continuing to have that which you have, which you have not attained earlier but have attained now. So suppose there is a very poor man. So suppose he gets one million dollars in a lottery. That is that may be called as yoga because of prapti prapti. He never had seen any money in his life. Now he has got one million dollars. But in the next week, if he goes to Las Vegas and gambles the entire one million dollars, he may based on that he may take some loans also. So he may be after ten days he may be left with half a million in debt. Then what is the use of this one million dollars that he got? So it is very important that praptasya parirakshan. If something good has happened, that has to continue. It should not be momentum. That is one aspect. Apart from that, rakshi virodhye pokkohim apayekshitattai kodukhem is what? Anishta nivritti and ishtapra. Both aspects. That he should get, he should be rid of all the things that he wants to give up. And also, he should get the things that he has decided. Once again, I'll give one more example. Suppose a person, he, he wants money and he also, he doesn't have money now and he is also having a lot of diseases. So he wants to have very delicious sakrapungal, <laughs> which is prepared in a very nice manner by you know, all the Sri Vaishnava steins and houses. But he is highly di diabetic even if he consumes one small morsel of sugar, his sugar will shoot up and it will result in some bad consequences. And then suppose somebody gives him, he comes to his house and gives him 10 kgs of sugar and says, you please prepare all the sweets you want and consume. Can he do it? <laughs> so Anishta Nivrti has to happen first. He should get himself rid of all the diseases, at least control them. Then Nishta Prabhu. So this is what is known as Rakshana, not physical protection. Physical protection may also get included in that. <laughs> but it's not uh, limited to physical protection at all. So Adavade, Rakshakatvantam, Arishta Nivartakatva, Ishta Prabhakatva Rupena, Dvidhamahayade, Ishwarancha, Chetamere, Rakshikayavade, Avar Hedakya Dukkavahamana, Virodhyayana, Pokkohyam, that means it should give them what is what actually gives them happiness, what actually begets happiness, and it should rid them of what actually gives him them misery. So, for example, if a person is having diseases, those diseases should be warded off. And if a person wants to have a house or a car or some prosperity, it should give him that. In very mundane terms, I am telling. Then he says, who is, who has what? As Ishta and Anishta. So what, do you, what does he want? What does he not like? What does he like? What is Anishta and what is Ishta? 
each person has its own his own definition of ishta and avishta <laughs> so some person may say i want to have a lot of property because i want to enjoy the property a person who has lot of property will say it's my destiny bad destiny that i have so much of property has been thrust upon me by my elders i cannot leave it i cannot have it i ask god to rid me of all these properties because i want to be happy from all this so is property ishta or anishta depending upon it is ishta or anishta depending upon the person it's not standardized because it depends on the disposition of the person so he says ive irandam chetanar ninna ninna adavukida irukkum so so i manavar mamani very beautifully comments he says ivar haluk even pokkum virodhiye de kodukkum apekhitame de inna aruli cheyirar ive irandam chetanar ninna ninna adavukida irukkum inne ಶತ್ರುಪೀಡಾಂಗ್ಸಾರಿ what is ishta for them what is anishta samsari haluk virodhi anishta is shatru peeda enemies and peedas are afflictions from various sources affliction from family members affliction from natural calamities affliction in his work days whatever it may be so that is a all that is uh, encompassed in the world adi shatru peeda adi adi means etc you can add all those things whichever you want to be added apekshitam annapana adi hel so worldly beings what do they want to have annapana adi hel they want to have food drink etc and etc etc you can add everything that is under the moon that they want in the world etc ಕ್ಷುಕ್ಕಳಕ್ಕೆ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸಂಬಂಧ ಅಪೇಕ್ಷಿತ ಪರಮಪದ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿ ವಿರೋಧಿ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸಂಬಂಧ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಟ್ರಿಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ದಿ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಆರ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಲಿ this world itself this worldly world i would like to put it like that <laughs> the world which is worldly is not good for him he doesn't want to have apekshitam paramapada prapti he wants to attain paramapada that is his ishta what is anishta samsara sambandha muktarkum nityarkum apekshitam kai virodhi kai ಮುಕ್ತರ್ಕು ನಿತ್ಯರ್ಕು ವಿರೋಧಿ ಕೈಂಕರ್ಯ ಹಾನಿ ಅಪೇಕ್ಷಿತ ಕೈಂಕರ್ಯ ವಿಧಿ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಿ ಮುಕ್ತಾತ್ಮಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನಿತ್ಯಾತ್ಮಸ್ ನಿತ್ಯ ಮುಕ್ತಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಿ ಮುಕ್ತಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಅಗೋ ಬಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಟೈನ್ ಪರಮಪದ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಮುಕ್ತಸ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರಿ ಆಫ್ ಜೀವಾಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಿತ್ಯ ಮುಕ್ತಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೆವರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಎನಿ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ with the world at all they can anta garuda vishwasena so they are called as nitya sar nitya mukta so the nitya mukta means eternally liberated so for them what is detrimental kain kariya hani so if you say don't perform the servitude of the lord or don't engage in the servitude of the lord they don't like it but that never happens of course apekshitam kain kariya they want to do more and more more and more more and more of service to the supreme lord so manavar mamni comments upon this very thanks to you all sir
அதாவது தேஹாத் சம்சாரி எடுக்கு மீன்ஸ் வாட் அதாவது தேகாத்மா அபிமானிகளும் அபிமானாதிகளும் சப்தாதி விஷயா விஷயானுபவமும் விஷயானுபவமே யாத்திரையா இருக்கும் சம்சாரிகளுக்கு நிவர்த்தியமான விரோதி சத்ருக்களால் வரும் மலிவு தொடக்கமானவை பிராப்தியமான அபேட்சிதம் ஷோரு தண்ணீரும் ஷோரு தண்ணீர் முதலானவை என்கை சத்ருபீடாதிகள் என்கிற விடத்தில் ஆதி சப்தத்தாலே ஆதி வியாதி முதலானவத்தால் வரும் பீடகளை சொல்லுகிறது அன்னபானாதிகள் என்கிற விடத்தால் ஆதி சப்தத்தாலே ஸ்ரக்வஸ்திராபரணங்காஸ்திராபரண அங்கார அங்காராகாங்கனா அங்கார அங்கனாதிங்கனாதிகளை சொல்லுகிறது சோ இட் மீன்ஸ் சம்சாரிகளுக்கு விரோதி சத்ரு பீடாதிகள் அபேட்சிதம் அன்னபான ஆதிகள் சோ இஸ் எஸ் ஆதி இன் தட் ஆல் தி மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் ஆஃப் சென்சுவல் பிளேசர்ஸ் So, Srakchandanadihil, that means in those days, of course, they are not mentioned <laughs> drugs, uh, alcohol and other things, which are not even fit to be mentioned. So, he says, Srakchandanadihil means applying the sandalwood paste, which gives a wonderful smell. Of course, even in several dharma, that is, samskaras, like... Uh, marriage etc all the uh, invites are offered srakchandanadi uh, held that is they are offered uh, sandalwood paste and other things they have to apply that means to denote a happy occasion it is done and when elders visit our house etc that has to be done but it's not actually prohibited but that itself should not become the main goal of life so srakya chandanam he says and anga having the sensual pleasures that is <coughs> having the pleasures that all animals would like to have etc that is what ordinary people are interested in mukshukalak ityadi adavade samsarathil அடி கோ அடி கொதித்து பரம பரத்திலே போக ஆசைப்படாதற்கும் முமுக்ஷுகளுக்கு நிவர்த்தியமான விரோதி பொய் நின்ன ஞானமும் பொல்லா ஒழுக்கும் அழுக்குடம்பும் தாய் கொண்டு இவ்விபூதியிலே இருக்கையாகிற சம்சார சம்பந்தம் பிராப்தியமான அபேட்சிதம் பகவத் அனுபவாதி எனக்கு அனுகூலமான பரமபத பிராப்தி எங்கை எரி கோட்ஸ் directly as part of his sentence a verse of namalvar which comes tiruvirattam it says poyinna gyanamum polla avalukkum alukkudambum so namalvar says until i came to know about you and until i performed charanagati to you and until i came to know about your divine form for several several millions of births i underwent poi ninna gyanam i underwent knowledge that was associated with ignorance or total ignorance then a very 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 unclean birth so a person might have been born as a pig as a dog or as several other animals even lion or tiger or whatever it is which are birds that don't allow the animal or the being to experience the divinity of the Lord. Because the Upanishads specifically mention only when a person is born as a human, he can experience the divine vision of the Lord and the divinity that is associated with the Supreme Lord. So he says, That means, I was born in several, 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 even we don't know, we have been born, who knows, because we have been right from the beginning of srishti or creation all of us who are there in this class or in this world are continuing to have birth and deaths so none of us know 
in what <laughs> as what we were born them we might have born as been born as trees plants shrubs in the beginning then develop over a period and actually we say the first we have amphibians and then uh, there are so many classifications <laughs> so we might have also been born as lizards then animals uh, vertebrates invertebrates etc 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 and now we have been born as humans so once a person attains paramapada or until he attains paramapada all these things are very much impedimental for him therefore he says samsara sambandham virodhi and apekshitam paramapada prapti because that entails eternal bliss which is in the form of the experience of the supreme path then muktar kum nityar kum adavade nivritta samsara rayum asprishta samsara gandharayum bhagavad anubhavade nita priti karita kaikariya pararayum irakum muktar kum nityar kum virodhi vahutta sheshiyana sarveshwaran trivadi hrade swarupad rupamah panni kondu poru kaikariyatukku varum vichedam so as far as mukta sar concern they have had the <coughs> sambandhar they have been born in the material world as far as nityas are concerned they have never had anything to do with the material world but if at all in such a scenario of course that scenario never arises they are prevented from doing kind kriya or servitude to the lord then that they feel is most most detrimental or <coughs> unfathomable even they cannot even fathom them and vahutta sheshi ama sarveshum he is the supreme sheshi who owns all of us so akar as our swarupa our nature itself entails the kind kriya is what we require because serving such a great 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 person there is nothing more blissful than serving the supreme lord that's what he says uttarottaram adishayide adimeshayide chelluhayahira kaikariya vriddhi engai aha ipadi adhikara anugunam virodhiye pokki apekshitatte kodukkayal ishwarane sarvarakshakam ennum chodittayitu so how can a person term the supreme lord as rakshaka or protector so protector means a person who bestows all that we aspire for and who rids us of all that we despise so this is what is the definition of protectionism or something like that how you would like to put it so this depends on the nature of the person if he is a samsari that is samsari that is who is engaged he is a bonded soul then the nature of <coughs> ishta anishta are different if he is a mukta that is mumukshu then it is different if he is a mukta or nitya mukta then it is different. but for all these classes the supreme lord is rakshaka or protector in this sense that is what this sutra says <coughs> and the 39th sutra which we will study in the next class it says ishwarane irandavar hal rakshakar allar enna vidum prapanna parikranathile shunno that we will explain and study in the next class so swami can we ask some questions yes yes please so uh you were explaining that the pranavam is the essence of the vedas and uh also you you were you, then you were explaining about the you gave five five different uh s- stages of understanding the the uh the omkara or pranavam um oral meaning the number of aksharas the number of words the meaning of the three words and uh, that the first three words contain the different alphabets then you uh were discussing about how 
the Astakshara should be chanted. You talk to somebody who said that the Astakshara should be chanted 8,000 times a day um, for a long time. In Mantra Shastra, we know uh, uh, a lot, many times it states that this sh you should chant for Mantra City or to do, to do uh, Purascharya or Purascharna. Uh, one should chant uh, one lakh times the number of syllables. Yes. So, so it, I'm just wondering, is there any actual Shastra Pramana that states, sometimes another, another number is given, like for uh, this Hare Krishna Mantra in Kali Shantra and Upanishad, they give a different number. So, uh, Upanishad, Upanishad. Kali Shantra and Upanishad? Kali Shantra, no. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, so, I'm just wondering, is there any actual uh, Shastra Pramana that gives uh, the number for 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 doing the Purusharya or Purusharna of Astakshara, <clears throat> no, and, where, and, and whether we that. should do it, whether we should do it. Yes, yes. I'll uh, I'll find out the Shastra Pramana and I'll let you know because it's very important. I'll definitely find out and let you know. So it's good that you ask this question because uh, this question had not come to my mind as to where the Pramana is. So definitely I will I will ask that scholar and I will let you know. But also <clears throat> the question is. Should each and every person who, uh, who gets us the Akshara Mantra, should that person do this Purusharya? Yes. <laughs> that is why it has given to him. <laughs> so, the main purpose is if he has to call himself a Shri Vaishnava, he has to qualify himself. And how that qualification comes by this only. <laughs> Otherwise, how can he be called a Shri Vaishnava? <laughs> so, just by wearing this Navam and <laughs> Uh, this one he will not become a Shri Vaishnava. Of course, that is also required. That is why it has been mentioned that this is the Bahya Lakshana. So, ultimately, that is what defines a Shri Vaishnava because, and one more thing is just think about the side effects, good side effects. Of course, there will not be any bad side effects. I am sure about that. So, even while we perform, say, if a person performs Sandhyavadana regularly, 15 times pranayama becomes a part of it. So if you do pranayama 15 times, 3 times a day, it is 45 times pranayama if you do. All your uh, breathing problems will uh, go and the, if you have hypertension, it will go. <laughs> so many advantages. And uh, even in Nachamanam actually, you do Achutaya Nama, Anantaya Nama, Govindaya Nama, etc. And Keshavaya Nama. How many times you uh, chant the names of it all? So in Sandhya Andhra, minimum 12 to 14 times you do Achamanam. Once again, three times a day. And uh, my father <laughs> tells me many, many a times, while performing Sandhya you should squat and do. So that is Kukutasana. So if you do that, all your, uh, <laughs> the problems associated with your knees, <laughs> you will not have any problems. <laughs> because you squat down so many times, while doing Arke Pradana, you rise, then you, once again you squat. So, automatically, all the diseases will go, go off on their own. You need not take any separate tablets or some injections or something like that. Even uh, very severe diabetes, etc. will go off on their own. Because ultimately, the mind will become so pure. And uh, automatically, it will have a great effect on your body. Because the scientific effect on the body of mantras there are so much, so many researches going on in the West. Unfortunately, not many people are knowing about that in India itself. But uh, just think about the wonderful side effects that it will have. Wonderful positive side effects, I would like to say, because side effect itself has a negative connotation. So that will become a big, big thing, and uh, the Tejas will attain, the Vak Siddhi will attain, all these are. Byproducts, of course, Sri Vaishnava should not give any heat to that. But they will automatically come to him if he does that. And uh, Ashtakshya, if, if it is some other ordinary mantra, it may have some other effects. Ashtakshya Maha Mantra, if you do, <laughs> you, it will give wonderful effects. Even though the person may not actually aspire for them, it will create a great effect. And it says, yes, Yatra Ashtakshara Samsiddha Mahabhaga Mahiyate Natatra Sancharishyanti Ravyadi Dushmadur Pikshataskara. His effect will be felt all around. 
unfortunately we we don't have any person who can, can dedicate their lives for this purpose then all around there will be no vyadhi there will be no durbhiksha and no taskara because it will create such a positive effect on all the people around him in ramayana it says siddhani ha viruddha jati janusha siddhani siddhashtave vairam yatva itas tyajanti vidhaya sarvai nishedhai saha so in the siddhashtama was such a great place where the tiger and the deer would stand side by side and drink water without any animosity so that is the effect that it had even uh, that the sage uh, vishwamitra had even on ordinary animals which are carnivores so that is the effect really happen but we don't we, you show me a person who has done 8000 times per day <laughs> definitely it will have a great great effect if it really happens right so it will have a good effect and you mentioned there is no bad effects from chanting astakra but i but i wanted to know if uh, if we do it incorrectly if there's an incorrect pronunciation if it's pronounced without the pranava or if it's pronounced with am instead of om if it's pronounced only namo narayana or only namo narayana or only the sabda narayana which is uh, uh, no, that uh, is what, which is given by different is, people yeah, will there be a different effect or without the nya, mantra nyasa and all these things will there be a different effect no, but, see if you tell along with mantra nyasa and other things it will be more effective but already we have come across the sutra shundum krama moriye chunmalam tat swarupam kedanilladi the 12th sutra 14th sutra something somewhere around that we have just already studied that even if there is a lopa or even if there is a short coming in chanting it definitely it will not happen that is why i also quoted this shloka agnyo vadati vishmaya pragnyo vadati vishnave ಭಾವಗ್ರಾಹಿ ಜನಾರ್ದನ the supreme lord wants to know what is really in your heart while you are chanting this his stotra and therefore he will bestow that he is not worry about the words that you use and that and even vedanta deshpa gives a wonderful example and he says when that is not applicable now so when the brahmachari takes the upanayana in the eighth year he is asked to he start bhavati bhiksha dehi you go to the house of a householder and say bhavati bhiksha and he will get bhiksha so brahmachari or the person who has just taken upanayana so he need not know which case ending and which is the suffix bhavati bhiksha dehi etc he just says you will say bhavati bhiksha and dehi so then you will get the hams so even without the knowing the meaning of the saying individual words associated with the sentence he will say about the viksha and he will get it he will get the result that is he will get the arms which will fulfill his uh, which will actually satiate his hunger for the day so, so swami, it is like that so swami we can continu- continuously meditate without sitting in one place as you are walking so that should add up to 8000 i think as we are doing 20 foot uh, the whole day um, can we do that is continuous meditation on shriman narayana yes of course <laughs> that is what has to be done <laughs> okay so will that yeah yeah so ultimately what yes, happens so the meditation and mantra when you go deep okay. and deep in deep the meditation and mantra will merge together mm. of course i don't have that experience but i i have heard from great people that ultimately what happens the mantra if you chant it so many times it will result in meditation and meditation and mantra will merge because mantra murtaya devata so the form of the lord itself is the mantra so if you do it such a long time for several years if you do 8000 times you will become a great yogi 
There is no doubt about that. When you will see the results, Swami. Yes. Yes, Swami. That's why I wanted to add to that. Um, as Mrs. Baldaraja was just asking, is that um, Sri Pad Ramanujajarya? He said that you know the Dwaya Mantra we continue to chant constantly, and I I think any reason for that is because it doesn't contain Om in it, whereas Ashtakshara has Om, and you have Dunyasa and all different things to chant. Ashtakshara. Uh, Keshav Das Nikali just repeat the question. I could not hear it properly. So he uh, he's saying, uh, Govindachari is saying that um, that uh, normally we hear that Tripad Ramanujacharya has recommended to chant Dwayam all the time and not Astakshram. Uh, and and he's asking, is it is it because uh, Astakshram contains the pranava? That because the Astakshram contains the pranava syllable, that we should do all the mantra nyasas, we should do it when we are clean. And probably we should not so think of it all no, the time. I don't. I don't think it is like that. It is. See, this is the known as mantra radha, and that is mantra radha. <laughs> so based and in the Trivaradna command, every place, in some places they say ashtakshara, and in some places there is uh, this dvaya, uh, and they are not too different or something. So it depends upon your disposition. If you want to make known you explicitly your Sharanagati to the Lord, you chant Dvaya. Otherwise, Ashtakira is also fine. So there is no like, is this great or is that place or something like that. And it has been mentioned the Ashtakshara, the uh, purport of Ashtakshara is expanded in the Dvaya. And it is practically shown in the Thermashtra. Right. I also wanted to remind you that we were discussing before in a previous class about Narayana Upanishad, Madhusudan Om, and you were going to find out what is the exact uh, Sunday yeah, that, rule for that. Yes, yes, that and yeah. also a few other questions I have. So you I've not been able to uh, contact that scholar, I'll just find out. And you. You, you also mentioned uh, Ekakshara Kosha. There is an yes. Ekakshara Kosha. Is it, is it available? Yeah, online. So actually, there are several Ekakshara Koshas for that matter. Okay. <laughs> there so are in the sense four or five. I can look at Most it of them are almost, they are all valid actually. There is nothing. There is some additions or uh, some uh, right. uh, omissions. But uh, Ekakshara Kosha is definitely, and in our Kosha itself, we have several single syllable word. Gotra, Kuh, Prithvi, Prithvi, Gotra, Kuh. Ku means earth. Right. So okay. that you have several in the eye. It's there in the Amar Kosha itself. But for example, nakshatra, vraksham, bham, tara. Bham means tara, that is star. So they have extracted the information and made it into a kakshana kosha for a ease of remembering, which is one another unique feature of the Sanskrit tradition. They have made, uh, collected all these and made them into shlokas. So you can memorize them and uh, easily refer whenever you want, online here, not online here. Right. So, so, very, very, very beautiful Kosha. And when you are actually composing verses in Sanskrit, you require them. Because in a very small, if you want to put a lot of information in an Anushtuk Shloka, you use the Ekakshara Kosha, which is a very, very evolved uh, language, very, very evolved type of uh, expression, which you don't find in any other language. Right. Okay. So you were also mentioning about the Brahmandas about Brahmandas, and you were suggesting maybe galaxies or solar systems and things. But sometimes we hear, in, in Shastras, we hear that the Brahmanda is covered by the different, uh, uh, different Panchabhutas. So if the, if, the Brahmanda, if the Brahmanda is like a coconut, if it has a shell, how can we, we cannot that is, see... That is why I think in Srimad Bhagavatam and Dalit mentions about the Andakataha or something like that. And the kataha means a, a shell <laughs> that is a egg-like shell in which all the solar system and so many other things, the seven above lokas, seven adho lokas, that is the uh, yeah, that is the nether worlds, uh, upper worlds, etc. are situated. But uh, whether it is associated purely with the physical things or not, 
physical uh, physically whether they are like that or not we don't know there is a lot of uh, debate in that regard okay so it might it might be figurative it might not be literal that the, yeah, that, yeah, that is, yeah i yeah. understand okay so then um, moving moving on to in today's class we were talking about four types of people we were talking four types of uh, chaitanas or jivas jivatmans uh, we have the we have the the person who's a samsari the person who's the mukta then we have uh, i'm sorry the mamukshu then the person who's the mukta and the person who's the uh, nityasuri okay yes. so but what about the kaivalyarthi the the person <laughs> <laughs> it didn't mention in there about the the person who's who's going to Kaivalya. Personally, personally, I am of the opinion that there is not much authentic information about Kaivalya. This is my personal opinion. I have had several discussions and even debates with uh, great scholars, including my own brilliant father. <laughs> but uh, I am not convinced personally. That is my personal opinion. I am not convinced because even Raman Jacharya says Kaivalya, etc. But there is no, I am not finding any proper evidence to say Kaivalya is this, Moksha is this. Then once again in Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, we say he's, he stays in a separate uh, location, or a building-like location. They are almost actually make it totally physical that he is put in an isolated room or something like that. <laughs> and yeah, sol solitary of, uh, confinement. Sorry, debate. Sorry? Well, uh, solitary confinement. <laughs> yes, uh, solitary. As if uh, he is a COVID patient uh, or uh, some person who is uh, who has uh, committed a very heinous crime where he is put into the dungeons of, uh, like you read in the, you know, among the Nazi uh, period of Yeah, but uh, like, a, like, a there, like a quarantine no we are all experiencing. There is no water, there is no air, etc. <laughs> See, all of us are experiencing the quarantine right now, so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like that. <laughs> I don't know. I have not seen any particular pramana which says like that. So he becomes sorry, he is in solitary confinement or something like that. So uh, also I just uh, I'm not very, I, I, I don't encourage uh, to, uh, too much of discussion because it's totally alien to us, the topic. Yeah, it comes up because we keep, we keep asking about the, the meaning of Sayuja Mukti because they have Sri, uh, in Narayana Upanishad, which is the pramanam from, for Astaksham, the Veda Pramanam. So it says Narayana Sayujam of Apnoti, Shriman Narayana Sayujam of Apnoti. Yes, yes, yes. So what does Sayujam actually mean? That's that's the question. No, no, that is mentioned properly. Sayujo Habhavaha Sayujam. Sayuk means Samana Guna Yoga. That has been mentioned specifically. They have see Saru, Sadokya, Sadipya, Sarupya, and Sayuja. You have four types of Mukti. Gradually it happens, so they say. But to some people, once again, unnecessary debate. Only Sahitya is real Mukti, other three are not. So it's not like this is given to some people and that is not given to some people. Gradually it occurs. That's why it is called as Krama Mukti. Some people don't accept the other three as Mukti. See, if somebody wants to debate for the sake of debating, we cannot enter into a debate. So Sahitya is well defined. Because it says Samana Guna Yoga. Sayujoha Bhavaha Sayujyam. Sayuk, that is Yujiri Yoga is the root. So Sayuk means they have mentioned it as Samana Guna Yoga. That means Apahata Pahapmatum, Vijaratum, Vimrityutum. That is Apahata Pahapma, Gunashtaka Yoga, they call it. That is Apahata Pahapma, he is rid of all the sins. He is devoid of all the sins. Vijaraha, Vimrityu. No old age, no death. Vishokaha, Vijikatsa, Apipasa. Vishokaha, devoid of misery, having no hunger and thirst, Satya Kamaha, Satya Sankar. And these kunas can expand into hundreds of thousands of things. So then he will all, he will become equal to the Lord in all aspects, except that is mentioned in Jagat Vyapara or Jadikana in last Adikana of Sri Bhaskar, where he said, he cannot have Sri Patitva, he cannot have the Karanatva, that is, he cannot become the cause of the universe, he cannot uh, create dissolute or become the cause of the sustainable. These are the issues that he cannot have. Other than that, all those things you know, that is what is Sahaja. Sahaja is well different. Right. So apart from being the husband of uh, Goddess Lakshmi or the or the creator or the giver of yes. liberation, he can so he has all knowledge. Cannot come. Chief Patitva cannot come. Ah, right. 
right? Okay, so very good. So also you were mentioning about Namalwar. You told you gave the 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 uh, prabandam where Namalwar was saying yes. that he has taken many millions of births. But uh, yes. we we take this as Nichana uh, Sandanam. We take this as uh, we take. No, he, because even in the Idam Upatara Irpadi, he says. Janma Parampara Hedine Thol Mari, he says, Nitya Samsariya Ipoorna Vivarai. So when they explain the uniqueness and greatness of the grace of the Supreme Lord, they say Namalvar in the beginning of the first Shri F. Patipadi or the first introduction to, there are three introductions. The first introduction specifically, Nambilai, who is one of the premier most Acharyas, who uh, was three generations earlier to become Acharya, he says, Janma Parampari Hedine Tolman. So it was almost like Namalwar is an eternal samsari only, he may never attain moksha. And he has taken several, 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 several births. And when he was actually feeling or it was, it came to such a state that he may never attain moksha at all. By the divine grace of the Lord, he became Namalwar. So, it's a matter of debate once again whether he performed any sadhana or anything like that. Irrespective of that, we say the, the divine grace of the Supreme Lord is so great that even a person who thinks that he may never get liberated, gets liberated. If he becomes the recipient of the grace of the Supreme Lord. So, so once again, we, we take the idea that Namalwar is an incarnation of Ishvaksena, that he is, that is when you, figure, figurative, you, it's figuratively. When you, when you see the greatness of his, then you say he is the avatar of this. But when you want to explain and uh, understand the greatness of the Nirhetaka Kripa or whatever you call it, of the divine grace, then you say he is an Ishvaksena. So they are not mutually contradictory. So they are when you want to see the greatness of this, this is how you see it. When you want to see the greatness of that, you see it like this. Okay, so just to finish off the, the, the pramanas that we, for the definition of Sayuja will come in Sri Basha. And, yes. uh, and, the, and this uh, Bhava, uh, Bhava Grahi Janardana uh, Pramanam is coming from where? Where is it from? That I don't remember. Uh, you can find out online, otherwise I'll find out in little. Okay. I have read it in the Introduction of a Sanskrit uh, grammar, grammatical text. Let's see. Okay, so the, those were all the points that I got from this class. And then, thanks, uh, for, thanks okay. for the nice discussion. Oh, thank you. And if Very anybody else has any other questions or comments, you can just unmute or you can write in the chat. So, so I think thank there you. are no questions. Or even if there are questions, we can have it next week. Correct. So thanks once again for the nice interaction. Mokacharya Yagurave Krishna Padasya Sunave Samsara Bhogi Sandashta Jiva Jiva Tave Namaha Nimate Samyada Matra Bhunimbraya Mahatmane Shri Rangavasine Bhuyat Nityashtir Nityamangalam